Releasing in cinemas uh, in Australia on March 17th is a new documentary called Anonymous Club. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the writer director of the documentary Anonymous Club, Danny Cohen. Danny, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you so much, Peter. Pleasure to be here. Okay, now, Danny, I know you've shot an, a number of music videos or whatever with Courtney Barnett. What was the process uh, of uh, eventually now making this feature length documentary about her? Uh, I think it was just a, a combination of, of working together for a while. Uh, we did some photos together and then we moved into doing music videos and it kind of just felt like uh, a natural progression to, to move into something longer form and, and document something else. Um, so I think we just were throwing all these different ideas about on how, the, you know, what the format of the documentary could be and where to start and whatnot. And we kind of just decided to get into it. And um, part of that was uh, to give Courtney the dictaphone uh, for her to basically keep as a diary as um, the, as I was filming um, wherever we were, basically. And her travels are, are very interesting, but she is seems to be such an intensely private person. Um, I'm wondering how much she was, uh, how keen she was for her to be filmed in such a way in a feature documentary. Uh, I mean, I think that's like uh, the first point of that is, I guess, is that that's what the dictaphone was doing is it was allowing Courtney to um, uh, not be camera shy and she could record her own thoughts when she felt comfortable wherever she was. So it kind of it gave her that freedom that, you know, you're somewhat in control of when you're what what you're willing to say and when you're willing to say it, as opposed to the camera kind of forcing that and potentially also um, getting a reaction that's maybe frozen up or shy or, or something like that when you when, when she was being filmed um but I think you know we, we were really good friends going into it um obviously you know much closer friends now I haven't gone through that experience together but uh I, th I think the friendship definitely helped us get comfortable with each other and I think it's also just repetition that when you're kind of just there all the time in green rooms or hotels or venues wherever you are you're just kind of this six foot five thing with a camera on your shoulder it's like you know you, you, you get used to being around um it's it's kind of not like okay today we're going to do a shoot and it, it doesn't build up this sort of pressure you're just always there with the camera and um ready to go and I like the way she refers to you from time to time, uh, like saying, Danny, I'm ready now, or do you want to shoot now, yeah. or, or whatever. It's, yeah. it, obviously, it's a very, very good sort of relationship that you have with uh, Courtney. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she's, um, she's, she's very special. Um, and I've learned a lot from her. So yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, which is fantastic, and, and it comes across so well in the, in the documentary. Um, tell me about the production process, because I know Film Art Media uh, mm -hmm. is uh, involved in the film. I know Sue Maslin very well, uh, etc. cetera. But uh, in terms of going overseas, shooting so much footage um, over there, as well as uh, local yeah. footage and so on, tell me about the production and, and the ability for you to uh, make this film. Uh, I mean, it, so it's, it's, it was all shot on 16 mil. Um, so that inherently comes with risks and rewards, I guess, um, which, you know, you can't have one without the other. Um, so really it, it was just trying to figure out a way to um, be a one person filming crew. So I, I, I had a, um, through some camera engineers and friends, we figured out a way to create a device that um, would trigger my digital audio recording on top of the camera every time I buttoned on on the um, Arton 16 mil. So I kind of it allowed me to, to not have to worry about um, you know slating at all. Um, so I could kind of just button on wherever I needed to, and then I'd be able to get the same length audio um, digitally um, to sync up after the fact. Um, so that was kind of the first thing is like how do you how do you do audio on your own um, and I kind of got a, a bunch of tips from Ryan Granger who was our sound, a sound designer and he kind of just taught me how to record audio um, and how to get levels and whatnot and so once that was sort of going once the sync device was going then it was just a matter of trying to find those moments and, and not chew through too much film um, so uh, you know you, you learn very quickly 
how expensive it is and um, what are those moments to try and roll and what moments potentially not to. Um, and, you know, you, you, you're traveling with, uh, at, at any one time, it could be 10 to 15 rolls, you know, half process, oh, sorry, half developed, half undeveloped. And, you know, you're going through airports and you're shipping off every other day film back to New York. And it just becomes this logistical sort of, um, not nightmare, just like ch challenge, very challenging. Um, and also very strange, sorry, to be going through airports and for people to say what's inside the canister and you're like film, but you can't, you can't put it through the x-ray and they're like, well, how, how do I know what's in there? You know, so you have to kind of be quite charming and um, confident. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting process because we're now so used to digital uh, camera work, et cetera, yeah. working with digital uh, 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 setup. So that in itself must have created a technical challenge, as you've already explained, but also an editing challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and also because... Uh, you know, Courtney's narration through the dictaphone was completely, uh, it was out of sync with what I was filming. So I'd be grabbing, backing up her digital dictaphone every few months and just backing that up. But then when I would be filming, I'd still have to send, wait till I've got enough rolls filmed to then ship it off to save costs, then wait for the processing of the film to come back. So it was always like weirdly out of sync. So sometimes it was influencing each other, but other times it's just like, you know, I'd get footage back and I'd be like, oh, this looks fantastic. And then a month later, I'd get audio that matched. Ooh. It was never easy. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it kind of came together a lot in the edit. Right, right. Okay, well, well done on that. Did that and, answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I liked some of the clips, um, especially one from German television uh, that Courtney was on. Yeah. I found that really interesting. Yeah, I mean, she, she just does so much press and we're just trying to show all facets of, um, of, of what she goes through. And, um, you know, it sounds on paper like, oh, it sounds lovely. People, you know, asking you questions about yourself all the time. But it, it can be quite grueling, especially when um, on tour, it's like every off day probably isn't just a day off where you're just exploring the city you're in. It's kind of like, okay, you've got, here's a list of press for the next destination you're going to, or it's kind of um, nonstop, but it's, it's obviously necessary and it's part of promoting yourself as an artist, um, but it, it can be quite um, grueling. It can, of course. And that leads me to ask the question because the film does uh, deal with Courtney's uh, mental health issues. Um, and um, I mean, at, at times I felt a little uncomfortable because there's the camera uh, filming her and, and she's talking about her own discomfort and, and, and so many other concerns that she has as a private person, but being a public performer, uh, mm. that, that in a sense, a schism in, in some respects. Yes. Yep. Yeah, between the two. So uh, can you talk about handling that and how she handles it? and so on, because it's it's fairly complex, I think. Yeah, I mean, in terms of handling it, in what way? Um, well, it, it, being able to uh, to be part of a film but uh, and to be in performance, but also to have so many concerns and, and personal issues yeah. that, that make it difficult to perform yeah. at times. She's so self-reflective all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it comes down to trust. Um, I guess Courtney trusts me and knows that I, I, the story I'm trying to tell is, is it is my perspective of what I see the story as, but um, I, I do have her best intentions at heart. And um, I think by showing those um, more raw and intimate moments, it actually, it, it helps the film because it allows people to connect. Um, I think if, if she didn't go that deep, um, or she didn't reflect the way she did, or she didn't dictaphone in those moments that she was really low or feeling fragile, I, I think maybe we'll just skirt the surface a little bit. And I, I think if, if, she, if she doesn't talk about that sort of stuff and everything just seems okay and she kind of doesn't want to talk about it, I think there's no light and shade and it kind of becomes, it's not one note in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, like someone's life being dramatic, but it just... 
I think as a viewer, when you see someone um, the, in such a raw, intimate way, you can't help but feel something um, and, 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 and you can connect because everyone has gone through similar self-doubt and experiences, you know, not just creatively, but I think everyone in their life experiences those sorts of feelings. And so it's um, quite refreshing to have somebody in, in a position of, uh, you know, a, a, a rock, I, I don't, you know, don't want to put her in a genre, but a, a rock artist or indie, indie artist um, that's on the world stage that, that feels just like everybody else. Like, you know, she, she's totally relatable in that sense. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It comes comes through so well. Um, so I'm wondering, um, did she ever uh, say, please don't film this or this is a no-go area? Um, because I can imagine the process uh, and trust, as you said, between you and her, um, there would have been times when she said no. Uh, not, we, we uh, very early on, we kind of established where I was like, just tell me if you want me to go away or tell me if you want me to stop filming um, or you're not in the mood or whatnot. Like, you know, I'm, I'm obviously there to, cr to cr document a story, but I'm not there to, um, I guess, distance Courtney um, from, from myself or from the film. So um, you have to be careful, but she, there, wasn't, there wasn't a time where she's like, could you stop filming now or not today or all that sort of stuff like she was really receptive and open and um understanding and you know a lot of the times i'm just going around to the to go to her room without an idea of what we're filming or what she's up to today or you you, you just don't know um so I, I i mean there's times where she's like oh you know i, I remember early on in the tour she, she was quite unwell and um the bus had to keep stopping every few hours for her to be sick and I was like, well, I guess I should be filming this. But I was like, you know, this is my friend. I, I, I'm not filming her throwing up. Like, that's just, you know, feels like a waste of film. And then in hindsight, a couple of weeks later, Connor, I like, she's like, oh, did you get any of that stuff? Like, that'd be great. You know, just because it's something different to shows or whatever. And, you know, it's not like she's like, please show the world me throwing up. But it was more like, did you, did you find that moment? And um, it was just early on. And I, I felt, um, you know, nervous to, to kind of, role on that sort of stuff sure and, and i appreciate that sensitivity that's a it, it's a, not an easy process so how did courtney react when she saw your final version of the film um i mean i think it's difficult for anybody to watch uh a, a film like that about themselves i mean i kind of relate it to like if you kept a diary for three years and you know, you wrote everything down in there, um, highs and lows, and then that's kind of played back to you. And, and a lot of Courtney's reaction was kind of like, yeah, I felt that, I remember feeling that, but the next day I didn't feel that. And now, you know, I don't even feel like that remotely anymore, three, four years later, and now that's gonna be shown to a large audience. So there's naturally, you know, a hesitation there um, of, of her not, I mean, it's it's more just like I don't I don't want to speak on behalf of her, but I, I guess it's more like maybe out of fear or embarrassment or of of, of what you might sound like or how people might perceive you. But um, I, I genuinely think that you know it, it never comes across as whingy or entitled or anything. So she's so self aware of the position she's in mm. that um, I think it comes across very human um, and a lot of the feedback we've had so far is that people are like I just want to be a friend I just want to like hang out with her you know because she's so relatable and she doesn't feel like she's on that sort of like rock pedestal she's just like a really lovely whatever normal is person yes um, down to earth yeah yep, absolutely yeah down to earth perfect yeah yep, yeah yep, absolutely so, right um so uh the film is is being released uh I know it was at, at MIF. um uh, and it's now being released uh, in cinemas in Australia. And I gather too that uh, it will have international currency. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's coming out um, at South by in a few weeks. Um, and then Oscilloscope um, are gonna, from New York are going to be distributed, uh, distributing it in uh, America, I think, 
um, give or take around August this year. Ah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we've got uh, Mondo Duo distributing it in um, Europe, UK. Oh, that, that's great. That uh, And yeah. she, she's obviously very keen and happy for that uh, film to have that uh, uh, worldwide coverage. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I, I think as more and more people start to see it, um, everyone will kind of understand, you know, what they're, you know, I think all Courtney really wants is that it, it starts a conversation. And I think the film's kind of an extension of the journey she goes on and things that she discovers about herself and what her purpose is and what she would like to do with her art. So I think the, the film hopefully, you know, reflects that and can also start new conversations about any of the topics or themes that are covered um, in the film. So I think it, it would be nice for that to occur. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, I, I, obviously I, I'm, I'm close with her and it's difficult to see it objectively, but I, I really believe that um, she's, she's painted in a very honest light and and that's a good thing absolutely what's she doing now uh i think she's coming back to to melbourne any day now um she's been in america touring um so she's coming back for the australia tour of um her album and and then you know a bunch of q and a's and premieres that we have for the film uh, in a few weeks oh excellent and Danny, yeah. about, about yourself, um, yeah. how did you get involved in uh, in filmmaking in the first place, and especially with uh, Courtney? Um, so I, I was I studied photography at RMIT and um, kind of was a photographer, still am ish, um, for I don't know ten years or so, and and doing a lot of um, part of that was like a lot of music and um, personalities, you know, celebrity portraiture. It's kind of what I was into, and um, my partner was uh, or is signed to Courtney's record label, and so I kind of approached um, Courtney through her as with you know a photo idea um, to take her portrait, and it kind of one thing led to the next, where I was like then taking um, you know doing the album artwork for her and Kurt Vile, and then I was doing music videos, and uh, that was kind of how Courtney and I got started. But other than that, it was just it felt like a natural progression from photography to move into music videos because, um, you know, my passion's always been film, um, but had never thought that that's where I would, you know, steer the ship. Um, but right. it's, it's, it feels like home, so it's good, yeah. That's great. Career journeys are so interesting. And, and yeah. yeah. Are you working on any projects at the moment? Uh, there's a few kicking around, yeah, but um, just all early stages um i took a bit of a break post uh the edit for um anonymous club and then um yeah now i feel like uh the creativity is has bubbled sufficiently to the surface so um yeah a few things kicking around i uh, i don't want to mention anything because they're all just sure. you know still bubbling sure. away and um yep. very early stages but yeah i think it's good to kind of have a few um a few projects on the slate so if one thing falls through you can kind of pick up the other and, and, and keep moving on that absolutely last question i'll ask you danny um yeah. are there any particular films or filmmakers that you particularly respect oh that's a hard one um i mean there's just it's hard to name anyone because you know it, any film can can be a reference point for anything and um that's kind of what's beautiful about it you know a director might um just do one absolute hit and the rest you know you know not but um I don't know I'm trying to think who I've been into I, I mean during lockdown and stuff I really got into like Eric Roma because it felt like these um you kind of whisked away into like these French countryside films that were quite talky and um weirdly romantically dark or you know there's something to it that so like all the moral tales that he did, I just found them um, quite fascinating. It's it's quite a divisive sort of um, approach, and I think as a director, he's he's quite interesting. Um, so I kind of I, I really got into him, um, and I just I, you know when everything was so locked down and it was winter and whatnot, it was just something you know beautiful about being swept away and kind of into these awkward love triangles or you know just weird beach moments I don't know it just it, it was 
it, it, it really um, was an interesting journey going through his like filmography. So sure. no, Eric Romero yeah. is a fantastic filmmaker. So uh, I yeah. certainly uh, endorse that. Look, Danny, congratulations on Anonymous Club. Uh, we've been speaking to Danny Cohen, the writer director of uh, the documentary Anonymous Club about Courtney Barnett, uh, screening in cinemas in Australia from 17th of March. And uh, Danny, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you so much for the time and the great questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too. <laughs>